Hey guys, just a quick chat about the three canon books published by Titan Books in 2014 for the Alien series. These are all set within the film series, kind of, in and out, sort of, but, you know, what the hell, let's have a look. Book one, Out of the Shadows, which will magically appear in my hand thanks to the marvels of editing. <laughs> thanks, John. <laughs> anyway. First book, Out of the Shadows, by Tim Levins, released January 2014. Uh, it's set between Alien and Aliens. Uh, the main character, let's go for it, is Chris Hooper. Um, well, you don't know him. No one knows him. Uh, it's still kind of the scared Ripley, which is quite nice, because she's not the total badass she becomes in uh, Aliens, which is kind of nice. So it's kind of that character is really like the terrified, oh, bleep, stuff just happened, you know, my ship just blew up, I'm all alone. She gets woken up halfway between her journey by like a crew and you know the cat's still alive which is great because you know Jonesy the cat that's an important character. We have a lot of cannon fodder characters we don't really get to know that well. They have a few lines here and there but you know, just don't really care. Um, you know as always they get picked off one by one. What is a nice return however is Ash played by Ian Holmes obviously in the original film. Um, let's see how to explain his return? He's kind of like a virus computer thing. Infects the entire computer system and basically sets up to taunt Ripley, really, to haunt her. It's, it's kind of menacing, but kind of brilliant. Um, then we go down onto a planet and that's when stuff kind of goes downhill, but it's really good, except for the ending. It just left it a bit open for one character in particular, which I won't ruin, but just, it's kind of like, eh, give it a 7 out of 10. Book 2, Sea of Sorrows by James A. Moore, July 2014. Less theatrical. Book! Please, you book. Right. Thanks again, John. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this is set after Alien Resurrection. Main character is Decca, which is a long descendant of Ripley, like second cousin, aunt removed, goldfish in law, something like that. Basically, and then you've got this. Rollins' character, who's a bit of a dick, comes in from Wayland Utani, kidnaps him, sends him to the planet full of aliens that they've discovered because they think, hey, descendant of Ripley, you kind of owe us a debt. It's a really tenuous link, but apparently it's good enough to kidnap someone. Who knew? Anyway, he's kidnapped and ends up with a bunch of kind of marine type mercs who go to discover aliens and discover it goes wrong just to shock and. Yeah, I know, it's boring, guys. It's the same story basically in every one of these. It goes wrong, as always, but the main thing is, Wayne and Utani, this is set like after Resurrection, so everything's gone wrong multiple times, and the company know this, and they must have wasted billions in time and people to get something to sell to people, that there probably aren't going to be any people left by the end of it in the universe. Still, it goes wrong, they get tripped underground, that's kind of nice, because you know, it's not all set in space or anything, so there's some rocks. We do get to see a bit of alien culture from a different species as well, which is kind of a nice thing to read in the books. I think, but I couldn't work out if it's the same place or planet as the first book, because it's kind of ambiguous. It kind of says it is, but then it doesn't. Then it infers it is. And then, you know, I accidentally found out I was reading My Little Pony. Get to the ending. The ending, once again, is just that little bit unsatisfying. Um, it's a lot of good grunt killing. There was characters' names coming up that died that I didn't realise was in the book. I was definitely reading the right book. But they just died. It was like, oh, you know, Corporal Leprinsky died, and oh no, Captain Pringle's lost a foot. So anyway, you lose track of who died, and then at the end of it, you kind of go, right, we're definitely entitled to a happy ending of some description, and um, we don't. We get once again a beige ending with no explanation. That kind of leaves you. But this one doesn't want you leaving more. The last book, I kind of wanted to know what happened afterwards. This book, I just don't care. So it's a good read, but. Eh, 6 out of 10? Book 3, River of Pain by Christopher Golden, November 2014. Book, please. Damn it, John! Thanks, John. <clears throat> anyway, this book is actually set during Aliens. Well, sort of before, even though it's the third book, it's set before the last book that was the second book in the Canonical Trilogy and time. But anyway. This is actually, well, it's, it's aliens, basically, but just before, but kind of at the same time. So you know that bit when she's doing all that really boring stuff, that's Ripley, 
at the beginning where she's talking about what happened and then no one believes her because she sounds like an absolute mentalist. But they still look at her and go, hey, we'll give you a job with a giant robo-crane, it's fine. But, you know, then they're like, oh, actually, we sent someone to go and have a look at it and it's, uh, it, it, it's gone horribly wrong. To, you know. <laughs> anyway, you all know the story of aliens. If you haven't seen aliens, I'd about to say get a life, but then if you've seen it as many times as I have, I don't really have much of one. Still, getting back to the book. So, we can return back to LV426, which is, uh, Acreon? Acreon? Never really sure you meant to pronounce it. But basically, that's Greek for River of Pain. Book title! And the actual colony itself is called Hadley's Hope. So we go there and we join all the characters we saw vaguely in the background at the beginning on the colony. But we do get to see a bit more of Al Simpson, which is a really small part, but it was played by Mac McDonald, which you might know as the captain in Red Dwarf in the later seasons. He had a little cameo at the beginning, a few lines, which is, don't ask. But we get to see more of his character. It's a really bizarre thing, but he's the main character in the book. Along with, obviously, Newt's family, which is Russ, Anne and Timmy Jordan, along with, obviously, Rebecca New. Um, so we're getting to see more of what happened to their everyday life and everything leading up to when they discover the alien ship and when they all start going missing, when it all goes tits up. How did the place get so messed up and, you know, the, the, the last stand and the bold things. We also mainly get to see a new guy coming in the form of a new marine captain called Captain Demian Brackett. Brackett was the name they came up with. Great. It's a great story and it adds much more to the aliens kind of experience really because well, now when you watch the film you kind of know what happened to all the extras in the background and all the innocent kids running around and it's bloody horrifying. It's just horrible but in the best kind of way. It's really enjoyable, I'd recommend reading it. Uh, it's just nice because now you're just checking out all the extras in the background thinking like is that that guy? Is that Steve from Accounting? That's Steve from Accounting in the book. It's great. Anyway, I mostly read at night. Mostly. Give it 8.5 out of 10.